final. So in other words, what I'm doing here is I'm going to come up with a formula that gives me the total energy of the, uh, of the object, both translation and rotation. So I'm going to write down over here what is the moment of inertia of the incoming object here. It's a solid sphere, so uh, 2 fifths mr squared. And then this one is the uh, half m2 v2 squared plus half. Then what's the moment of inertia of the hollow cylinder? That one is uh, hollow cylinder mr squared, right? This one is almost hollow cylinder, not perfectly, but it's almost hollow. So all its mass is concentrated on the outside. So uh, its, its uh, mass distribution is just mr squared. Okay, so you're going to have mr squared here, omega 2 squared. So the reason I did this is because look what happens here. The 2, the 2 cancel, r squared omega 1 squared is its velocity squared, right? Because uh, we're assuming here that it's rolling, pure rolling motion. The tangential velocity is equal to the center of mass velocity. So uh, r squared omega squared is equal to v squared. So we can actually combine these two in a single equation. One half plus one fifth. Yeah, one half plus one fifth, that's uh, let's do this here. And this one is half this one is just itself. So half m v2 squared. So now combine this in a single equation. In other words, this expresses the kinetic energy of the object once you know its velocity. The omega is included in there, you see. Well, you combine this, you get uh, 7 tenths, right? So 7 tenths m1 v1 squared plus, and then this one half and half gives you just itself, right? Total one. So m2 v2 squared equals k final. So now I can put in the numbers that the problem gave me. 7 tenths, uh, its mass was uh, 2 kilograms. v1 was 3 meters per second. Plus m2 was uh, 3 kilograms times V2 was 1, and then that's equal to K final, which equals 7 tenths actually let's put the mass here, that's equal to uh, 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms. So then this is equal to uh, 5, 9 times 7 is 63 plus 3 which equals, uh, uh, this is what, 12.6 plus 3 is 15.6 is equal to, uh, this one is 5, 1 and uh, 1.4. So this is the equation that I get from the kinetic energy conservation. 15.6 equals 1.4 v1 squared plus 3 v2 squared. So here's my second equation, and my first equation is the momentum conservation. Then I put the, that into this, right? I solve for one of the variables. Then I put it into that again, and then we can solve this. Now, you, again, you should get two answers. Again, you should get two answers, and one of those answers should be equal to its original value, you know. Um,
Okay, multiply everything in, combine like terms, get a quadratic equation, solve it with your TI. And then tell me what you get there. Uh, I got 2.07. Yeah, the 1 is its original velocity, yeah. So 2.07. And the other answer is 1. Okay, and then once you get V2, you can put it in here and solve for V1. Uh, that's going to be about one and a half, huh? So it will slow down. The sphere will slow down. The cylinder will speed up, right? One point. Three nine five. Okay. That's V one. One point four four. And then, if I want to know their angular velocities, like you can divide the uh, translational velocity by r, the radius. So omega two is going to equal V two divided by r two. And omega 1 is going to be equal to V1 over R1. That will tell you their uh, angular velocities. Now, one of the questions that it would be interesting to find out is this. Go back to the original problem here and ask this problem. What if those objects, instead of being rolling objects, what if they were simply just pucks hitting each other? Or blocks hitting each other? Same number, same everything. What would be their final velocities then if they collide elastically? Is that, how is that going to compare to the final velocity for rolling objects? It would be kind of interesting to compare the two, right? So well, how would we do that differently when we get to the kinetic energy we don't need to worry about half i omega squared, right? We can simply do their regular kinetic energy, half times 2 times uh, 3 squared plus half times uh, 3 times 1 squared is equal to half times 2 times v1 squared plus half times 3 times v2 squared, right? And then you get here uh, 229 plus... Uh, you know what, let me get rid of the twos. Uh, I'll have 9, 18 plus 3 is 21. So this is like your good old chapter 9 problem, where when we didn't need to worry about rotation, right? And then substitute that. That one doesn't change. That one is the same in chapter 9 as, in, uh, as now. So that one we substitute over here. <clears throat> and then we end up with uh, 